For my liquid water today, you can see it's a little bit yellow and I didn't use water. I actually used fermented vegetable brine that I use, that I have left over once I make once I ferment my own vegetables. So it's like this really strong probiotic. And it smelled really smoky once it was added um, to the lye and to the soap base. And then I'm go just going to add my essential oils, which was patchouli, clove, and ginger. And it just, once it was all blended together, it smells really nice and masculine and smoky. And I really liked that. Um, I would also added a little bit of Tussa silk to the lye water as well. Now for my colorants today, I'm using Brazilian black clay, not charcoal. I have about two teaspoons mixed in oil in that pitcher, and then I have red reef clay mixed with pink Brazilian clay, also from Rainforest Chica. And you don't need a lot of red reef clay because it will bleed. And then I also have cocoa. I think there is about two tablespoons of cocoa mixed in canola oil. And then I added my soap batter <clears throat> into that and blended it. And then this coppery um, yellow like orange color it was a mix of turmeric it was like half a teaspoon of turmeric mixed with two, te two teaspoons of cocoa and then I mixed that with um, canola oil as well and then I added the soap batter and now I'm just going to be doing a Clyde slide down this pitcher here um, there's no particular order I just try to alternate colors so that they're contrasting and I find okay so this was a 12 pound batch of soap and I had to keep it fairly fluid, uh, so I was actually soaping kind of hot. It might have been about 110 degrees at this point, and it was thickening up a little bit, but it wasn't like it's was still manageable. I just had to stir it down, and it would go back to its more liquid state. And so we're doing the Clyde slide, and then I'll show you how I pour it into my mold. Now this technique, it's turning into one of my favorite techniques because it's really easy, and you get a really nice design. It's like a wood grain or a thin line design but without all the tedious effort. And when you're making big batches of soap, which to me 12 pounds is a bigger batch, um, well it's 12 pounds of oils and then the lye water. So anyway, um, it's just a great technique for getting a nice design throughout the whole slab. So what I'm going to do is I just pour to the center. It's kind of like half of a kiss pour. So you may have seen my other Kiss Pour uh, soap challenge videos where you pour two pitchers together, but this is just one pitcher, but it's the exact same thing and it's a lot simpler and your results are still just as nice as the regular Kiss Pour. And so I'm going to just go ahead and refill this pitcher. I end up refilling it four or five times before all the rest of the batter was used up. So it was quite a production, a lot of messy dishes. Um, but fun. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in fast forward motion and you'll see the process here.
It's 18 hours later and my soap went through gel phase and so now I'm going to cut it into four loaves and then after I've cut it into those loaves, I'm going to cut it into blocks and then I will cut it each block horizontally and you'll see that in the next couple minutes. The trick to this method is to pour your soap deep enough so you're able to get two levels of soap bars out of it. Um, otherwise you're gonna, going to be planing off a lot of soap that would otherwise be wasted. So that's why I pour my soap to at least two inches thick. It's actually more like two and a half inches thick. Um, and then I just cut that in half. And okay, so this router thing, this is a soap beveler that I got from Wild Plantanica and I absolutely love it. It really just um, turns a, a sharp edged uh, soap into a really pretty beveled soap bar and I'll put the link below in the description as to where to get one of these.